Welcome back to Movies TV Man. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man. And welcome to Friday's edition of the Doctor Who Daily. Take a look at this. This dropped a couple of days ago. Um, a bunch of Doctor Who fans uh, were posting this on Twitter. And of course, the chaos ensued. Because everyone has an opinion on Doctor Who Twitter. Some people get really excited. Some people get triggered. It doesn't really matter if you're triggered or not. So let's talk about this. Now, this says, who in... Let's say this again. Who in... I can't even say it because you've got who and in verse... Yeah, who and in verse one limited. So everyone's getting very excited. They can see what's going on. So basically, uh, a space has been, um, I suppose, rented or bought. And I think they'll go in there. It looks like the 15th of November 2022. So it looks like shoot, shooting for the Doctor Who 60th anniversary episode starts here on uh, uh, 15th of November 2022. So very, very interesting developments. And people have assumed and talking about the Doctor Who extended universe, a franchise. This shouldn't come to a surprise. 21 you shouldn't need this to actually kind of put two and two together not get six but get four this was always going to happen we know that russell t davies kind of created a franchise with doctor who torchwood and the sarah jane adventures but unfortunately russell and the bbc totally parted company this was a mistake as i've said many a times before russell t davies should have remained as a godfather to the Doctor Who franchise, while whatever showrunner he put on there, you know, he would be running or she would be doing the day-to-day -day stuff and running the show. But Russell would be the head honcho. This wouldn't take up Russell's time too much. He'd still be able to make his other shows and one-offs and all his dramas that he's been doing since he left Doctor Who. But he should have been the head honcho. The, the guy upstairs, the Kevin Fake. But he just left. And we've seen what's happened to Doctor Who ever since he has. Stephen Moffat, a really, really great writer. But Stephen Moffat isn't a showrunner. And he's a writer who likes to subvert expectations. Yes, those two words again. I might have a little discussion about that on another video or at the end of this one. So Stephen Moffat triggered people a lot. And then obviously, you know... What can I say about the current show showrunner? You know, Chris Chibnall. It's um, it's an interesting state of affairs. It, it it really is. But it's not what we had under Russell T Davies. He's back. He's back from next November, starting work on this. He probably has already written the 60th anniversary, knowing Russell. He's kind of very very organised. But it looks like they're going to start shooting, or maybe these are the offices they're going to be working in, in developing stuff, in writing stuff. Maybe it's that. So it's all very interesting and very exciting if you're a Doctor Who fan. I think it's exciting because, yes, Russell T Davies was always going to create the Doctor Who extended universe franchise. But he's got to walk off before he can run. Of course he, he has because, you know, we're not where we were. You know, he, it took him two seasons of his Doctor Who before he even went into Torchwood, you know, to build up the show. And he's going to have to do the same thing again. And I, I don't think he's a man who's going to foolishly run into, you know, rush into, you know, creating a huge franchise which, with multiple shows and maybe movies. Who knows? You know, his ambitions may be so huge. But you've got to get, you know, you've got to get the Doctor's house in order first, which Russell will absolutely do, no matter what direction he goes in. And so get the Doctor's house in order for a couple of years, maybe. Maybe it won't take him as long as that. Maybe he'll just come back, do the special and then start working on the spin-offs and bringing in his own showrunners, his own people. I don't know. But, you know, there's no question, there's no doubt in what Davies has intended here. The day I started doing these Doctor Who daily videos again, from the day I found out Russell was returning, it was an amazing day, it was an afternoon, I remember it, I was shocked. I was about to take a fucking shower. And I stopped having that shower, and I did a video. So, and I explained to you what was going to happen. I explained to you that Bad Wolf Productions and Russell T Davies have now got control 
of the Doctor Who IP and the franchise. And no matter how many people whinge on Twitter or whinge at the BBC about the direction of it, by them taking control of it, because the BBC have no clue what to do with it, they know they don't want to get rid of it, because there's so much money in it now, thanks to Russell T Davies reviving it in 2005. So he's back to revitalise this show, but to build up a franchise. And he's going to be around for quite a few years. He's done what he's wanted to do. Now he's back. But this isn't like the early days. He's looking to build up a Doctor Who empire. And if anyone can do this, it's Russell T Davies. Now, I've heard some mumblings that Russell's copying the MCU. Listen, when George Lucas created Star Wars, he was inspired by King Arthur and Flash Gordon and characters of the like. Are you calling George Lucas a fucking copycat? And by the way, the Marvel Cinematic Universe didn't start till 2008. Torchwood, I think we saw, was it in 2007? Or something like that. But he came up with the idea for Torchwood before the MCU anyway. But it doesn't matter. You know, somebody else can have a franchise, you know, as well as the MCU. So don't talk absolute fucking nonsense. He's building up a franchise whether you like it or not, whether you're accusing him of copying the MCU or not. It's a great idea. And the great thing is here, it's going to, you know, he's going to make it amazing. So he's building a Doctor Who empire. We are in the 21st century. And franchises are all, you know, are all, you know, are, are fashionable, are a trend. So why wouldn't you do this? If any, if any IP, you know, deserves the franchise treatment, it's certainly Doctor Who. It's kicking and screaming to be franchised with spin-offs and movies and characters going here, characters going there. Of course it is. You know, this is a show where the lead character meets so many different characters in in their everyday adventures as companions. There's so many companions of the past who can have their own spin-offs, future characters, anyone. And Russell T Davies will make sure the right people are involved to do a good job. It's not just Russell. Jane Tranter is a genius. Russell's a genius. And Julie Gardner's a genius. And who knows? We may even get Phil Collinson back which would be a bonus, and hope we, I hope we get Murray Gold back, but that's entirely up to Russell T Davies. I will back whatever decision he makes, but, you know, he's going to get a lot of money to do this, you know. I don't know who's spending the money. The BBC must be investing slightly, and Bad Wolf Productions are a very, very big production company, so they'll be investing as well. This is a huge undertaking that will make the BBC and Bad Wolf Productions and Russell T Davies a huge amount of money. But it's not really, it is for the BBC and of course Bad Wolf Productions as a business want to make money, of course they do. But this is about Russell T Davies and his love for Doctor Who. He got it absolutely spanking right the first time. He modernised it, it was still the same show and the same character, but it was emotional. It was more nuanced. He did the right things for the future of Doctor Who. And that's exactly what he's going to do again. And I can't wait. I really wanted to squeeze this in today as well. Female Doctor Who contributed to rise in male crime, claims politician. A Conservative Party MP claims that casting women in traditionally male roles is depriving men of positive role models and encouraging crime by Shian Allen of Screen Rant. Of course, it would be a woman writing this article. Now, of course, this is the most terrible take in the world, and we'll get into it, but let's read the article. A British politician has made a bizarre claim that the casting of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor in Doctor Who is part of a casting trend that has encouraged more young men to commit crime. Whittaker made history in July 2017 when she was cast as the first ever female iteration of the Doctor in a long-running sci-fi show's history. The series had previously confirmed Time Lords to be uh, gender fluid, most notably through Michelle Gomez's portrayal of Missy, a female incarnation of the Master. But the important thing about Missy is not only is she female, she's a great incarnation of the Master. The first female Doctor is a dull, uninspiring version of the Doctor. And that's the problem. We'll talk about it. As Whittaker's time as the Doctor comes to a close, she and current showrunner Chris Chibnall are set to leave the show next year. 
Many fans have been reflecting on her era of Doctor Who. The Chibnall era has not been without its controversies, with many criticising the inconsistent writing and poor characterisation. However, Whittaker's performance as the 13th Doctor has been largely praised, and if Doctor Who has suffered a slump in popularity for the last few years, it certainly has nothing to do with the gender of its lead character. No, I agree. It's nothing to do with the gender, but people are upset by it. But, I have to be clear, even though the intentions of Chibnall to change the gender of the Doctor um, were probably a political thing, and to make a point, the Doctor can regenerate as anything or anyone. So, it's there, it's up for grabs. That I, I don't have an issue with this because it can be done. It's there. We'll go deeper into it in a moment. However, Adam uh, Bienkoff reports that a Conservative MP from the United Kingdom has made an ill-informed connection between the casting of Whitaker and a rise in male crime. Speaking in a Westminster debate that took place on International Men's Day, Nick Fletcher st stated that a tiny but vocal minority were calling for every male character or good role model to have a female replacement. The politician went on to say that in recent years we have seen Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Luke Skywalker, The Equaliser, all replaced by women. <laughs> you see, people like this, you know, people like this just stir it up in the wrong way because half of his facts are wrong anyway. He argues that this leaves young men looking up to antagonistic characters such as Peaky Blinders, Tommy Shelby, Sir Cillian Murphy. Yeah, but we've always done that. Fucking hell. The amount of people who looked up to fucking Rambo and Grant Mitchell. We didn't all go out and commit crimes, you know. Fletcher states, is there any wonder we are seeing so many young men committing crime? Watch the video below. No thanks. Fletcher's argument that casting women in traditionally male parts deprives young men of positive role models fails to consider the historical and continued marginalisation of women and other genders on the screen. Despite hugely popular franchises such as Doctor Who and Star Wars giving leading roles to women in recent years, this doesn't cancel out the fact that a large majority of TV and film remains dominated by men. Good news. In addition, women being cast, I'm joking, in reboots or continuations or huge franchises does not erase the performances of the male leads in previous entities. So-called gender-bending reboots continue to cause controversy, as some argue that the alternative, more nuanced option is to create new roles for women on screen, which I agree with. However, Fletcher's claims that casting women in traditionally male roles is causing rise in male crimes are misguided. Listen, it's bollocks. What the Tory politician said is absolute bollocks. I know it, you know it. But and I see people taking advantage of this idiot statement. Of course, that's what they want. They're supporters of Jodie's Doctor. They like Jodie's Doctor. So, and you know, they agree with the gender bend, you know, and all of that. And swapping women for men and people from different identities. Listen, I'm fine with a female doctor or, you know, a transgender doctor or any type of doctor, as long as the person who is picked, whether it's white, Black, Indian, Asian, transgender, gay, whoever, however you identify as, as long as you've got the ability to play the doctor in the bestest way possible, I couldn't give a flying fuck. But statements like this become manipulated by people from the extreme left and the extreme right. And there's the problem. This is an idiotic statement by this guy. And personally, I don't even think it's worth debating or discussing. The issue is today, every time I go on my timeline, I hear another female has been cast in a male role. I mean, the Equalizer TV series. I mean, am I saying an Equalizer reboot can't have a female as the Equalizer? You can do, but what you could have done is create maybe an Equalizer show and an Equalizer spin-off with a female lead, right? You could have done that, but you don't want to do that. You want to make a point. It's about optics, everyone. The truth is they're not interested in representation and inclusion. We are now in an extreme political entertainment industry. They're here to take down the patriarchy. They're here to replace straight white males with people of colour, minorities and women in big iconic roles. And that's why they're not creating original space for them. You know, fresh space for them because they're not interested in the genuine representation and inclusion of minorities 
and women. That's not what they want. So what this guy's saying, you know, no wonder guys are committing crimes, he's talking shit. But the issue he brings up is a huge issue. Soon it will be very, very hard for straight white males to even get a job in entertainment. And it's becoming worse and worse and worse. This isn't empowering women or minorities. This is about revenge. Because the extreme left are obsessed, are obsessed with the past. You can't change the world's past. You can't change the inequalities that were done in the past. But you can move forward and have men, women, white people, black people, Asian people, transgender people, gay people, people of all types, right? Standing together in the entertainment industry, in life, in other industries, but no. The extreme left and extreme right want a war. And this is why I won't get involved with it in that type of sense. But there is an issue here, and it is destroying the industry. Ultimately, the Western English-speaking industry is eating itself alive over extreme politics. Creatives like Stephen Moffat are very, very similar to people like Ryan Johnson and a few others out there, where they want you to think they're going to give you one thing, but they give you another. And I've compared this to the Seven movie in the final act, where we find out that Brad Pitt's um, wife, um, at the end of the film, is actually murdered by the serial killer after they've captured him. And a similar thing happens in Dexter season, is it the season four finale, where Dexter kills the serial killer, but beforehand the serial killer murders his girlfriend Rita, or wife Rita. But he doesn't know that until after he's killed the serial killer. These are exciting twists. What Johnson did with Star Wars The Last Jedi were boring twists. For, let me give you an example of uh, what Stephen Moffat did with Doctor Who. We had a great episode like Hell Ben. It was compelling. People were ailing it. Some of the best work they've ever seen in Doctor Who. Certainly since the revival. And then he gave us Hell Ben. He teased us at the end of Heaven Sent that the Doctor would go to war with the Time Lords. In fact, he shocked us by making it an episode about the relationship between Glara and the Doctor. I want to be clear about Hell Ben. It's not bad entertainment. It's not bad in terms of storytelling, but what he, because this is the kind of things people like Moffat do. People like Moffat are not interested in you're the best writer, you're the best, you're the best. They like twisting the narrative. You know, they like, you know, they, they like to surprise people. But the way Ryan Johnson did it and the way Stephen did it, going from Hell heaven sent to hell Ben. what it does is it's like saying to me i've just given you a drug that's going to make you high and then afterwards it's going to wear out and you can never have that that drug again it's the same with heaven sent to hell Ben. heaven sent builds up this br brilliant episode these consequences of the doctor having to cope with the loss of his friend and then they just go she's still alive it, none of it mattered none of it mattered the episode before didn't matter. Heaven Sent didn't matter, basically. That compelling episode basically doesn't matter because in Hell Ben, everything's going to be all right. Yeah, Clara's kind of dead, but she's, she's got a limited time to travel around in the TARDIS now, and the Doctor won't remember, remember her name. It was pointless. The whole thing was pointless. Now, why does Stephen do that? I mean, I don't even think he's spoken about it before. I'd like to have a conversation with him about it, a constructive conversation. Because personally, as surprising as all that is in Hell Ben, it's not exciting surprising. I didn't get any kind of buzz from it. And he kind of killed off a companion, right? Gave the doctor this compelling episode and then said, nah, none of it matters, never mind. And this is what Ryan Johnson did. You know, Ryan Johnson pretty much killed the, you know, the sequel trilogy in the second movie. He solved the whole story. There was nothing really to do in the second movie. JJ had jack shit to work with. Things like this and creatives like this create a real problem. I think they get some, I truly believe that they get something out of getting a negative reaction from the audience. It's like they're playing games with us. Ultimately, 
you can do this in your own stories if you like, nobody cares. But when you do it on these big IPs like Star Wars and Doctor Who, people are going to notice. I just, look, Stephen Moffat was the showrunner of Doctor Who. He had every right to do whatever the fuck he wants. But ultimately, personally, I got nothing from going... To, and I, for, I forgot what that episode is when Clara dies. She dies at the end. It's compelling. Heaven sent is sensational. Then Hell Bent is like a balloon just letting their air out. And for the rest of the episode, you've got an empty balloon. A balloon looks better when it's got air in it, hasn't it? And that's what... He did. That's what Stephen Moffat did. He ruined his season. He destroyed his whole season. And it was a shame anyway because was it that season? It was that season, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was that season um, when ultimately Clara left and we had that whole hybrid arc, which came to nothing. The hybrid arc was the most strangest thing. Because when it was first mentioned by Davros at the beginning of the season, it was mystical and interesting. And I thought, wow, so is the Doctor the hybrid? Who's the hybrid? We were doing this again, weren't we? We did it with who's Clara? No, we were doing it, who's the hybrid? He was doing it again. I've explained this before. Mystery box storytelling is about a box. Someone saying to you, here's a box. Guess what's in it? You open the box and there's nothing in it. And that's what the hybrid is. And this is what season nine is. Season nine had these epic two-parters. It was amazing. And at the end, he destroyed all of his good work. This has been the Doctor Who Daily. I admit your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Please hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more Doctor Who Daily. Until then, goodbye.